Black Room, October 20th, 17 Cheddar Pound Keto from Cassie McClutter on Vineo. This interview is part of our Road to Edif series. You can find the rest by clicking here. Black Room takes the player on an insomnia, fueled journey of tests, and dreamlike internet places, following female game characters as they explore new narratives in a never shifting. Fragile HTML world. Garnet Sutra spoke with Cassie McCarter, developer of the Novo Award nominated Black Room, to talk about driving come from the chaos of the internet, telling a modern fairy tale through tests and reimagined game worlds, and the challenges of creating a dream like feel for this personal story. I am Cassie. I made Black Room over a period of two years. My collaborators, Ronan Goldspan and Brandon Coates did the audio for the game, and my friend, Maya Ashback, contributed her beautiful writing. I made my first video game one about a set, Neon House in 2014. I got into video games as a medium while I was working on a project in Google Earth making digital installations for imaginary. Inhabitants and painting directly into the landscapes via camel. I wanted to make something truly interactive, and Unity was recommended to me. I got really into it, and into a small community of indie devs, who support each other, and decided that games is where I want to be. Since then, I have made several interactive works, small games, and installations. Black Room is very autobiographical in nature. I struggle with insomnia and anxiety. One night when I could not sleep, I came up with the idea to make a game that was played directly in through the HTML source code of the pages. The player would have to look underneath the facade of the browser in order to progress through the game, like leaving unrelated comments in your code and the comments would be where the actual game took place. Over the following years, the game moved away from this original idea, to focus more on the mythology, fantasies, and stories of my childhood combined with the nostalgia of a pre bubble internet, the Black Room, poem, which guides the player through the first half of the game, is about imagining a black table in a black corner in a black room, and so on was a method that truly proposed to me by my mom when I was younger and struggling to sleep. Imaging rooms in my head made me very dizzy and nervous, and that's where this game begins. My grandmother also suffered from insomnia and used to, to play video games, Zelda, the Mona series, Final Fantasy, Zombies ate my neighbors all night long. And when I did sleep over at her place I was enthralled just watching her beat these games over and over. This was my only access to video games. I was not allowed to have a console at home as a kid. So these trips to grandma's house and those games were like that time fairy tales to me. And, of course, I have always been fascinated with digital folklore and with our relationship to the internet browser, which we use now as a ferret to communication more than ever. Browsing the internet late at night is, I think, something a lot of people who suffer from insomnia or sleep issues can relate to. So in that way, late night internet browsing became my bedtime fairy tale, just like grandma's nest became hers. From that first connection, the entire narrative in Black Room bloomed into what it is now. Tools I used include basic HTML5 and JavaScript, including a JavaScript library called Phaser, Photoshop and Showbox for editing and compiling spreadsheets, Google Search Poetry, a book by Ole Alain Drop and a spin sheet called Digital Folklore about the idea of a vernacular internet. Some writing by Wilhelm Reich, a ten of mythology writing, my anxiety and insomnia, terrible and invaluable tools, my own practice of facilitating a rich dream world, through lucid dreaming and journaling, 
and a lot, and I mean, a lot, of listening to Kate Bush. Our use of the internet is far from purely utilitarian at this point, but will you generally go online to seek something, books, stories, entertainment, updates from friends, updates from strangers? The internet can be both amazingly impersonal as well as very intimate, often at the same time. This duality colors our daily interactions. And in my opinion, makes a web browser an extremely rich place, a narrative game to life, filled with all this nuance almost by default, and one I have not seen explored explicitly in games in the last few years. I have always been interested in, and consider myself a net artist at heart, so it felt natural for me to decide that I wanted to make a game with. The internet as a canvas, and I wanted to start that immediately by creating a memorable URL for the game. A random smash of twenty-six or so letters, counteracting the idea of a seal of the capitalistic desire to colonize much of the web. I wanted Black Room's URL to have to be passed from person to person, copied and pasted directly, like a middle school note. A secret. I used several visual cues to signify the shifting levels of the player's dream world, mostly by increasing color, movement, and the amount of pure content on each subsequent page of black room. For example, the game starts in a simplistic room, an outline with single white lines defining walls, a folding chair, and a candle. Slowly. The black rooms become more complex. Color is gradually introduced. I initially stick to some of the first internet colors cues: green, blue, red, neon green, white. About halfway through the game, a burst of hot blue, a pile of orchids, PNGs, a room with a character from the Wizardry series. Finally, some full color graphics. The dream is evolving, getting deeper. Getting more complex, building its narrative. I begin to use gifts instead of stationary objects. The rooms become more and more alive. Eventually, you end up in fields of sprites with an overwhelming amount of colors and movement. Mechanically, other than the ever-present need to resize the browser in order to progress, the game starts as a very basic point and click before shifting into. Something reminiscent of dungeon crawler-style gameplay, and finally breaking through to fighting game vignettes. It's like a brief journey through different types of the indie game genres, while at the same time being about your brain making subliminal associations through color and tone. I hoped that these elements would gently guide the player subconsciously through the story. The other thing that happens as gameplay progresses. More and more tabs open up as the player clicks around on different elements. The increasing number of open tabs work together to build a more cohesive, but at the same time physically scattered story. The most challenging thing was weaving the fragments of narratives and different types of gameplay together in a way that felt natural, but still jarring enough to make the player feel some unease. I relied on the cultural obsession with too many tabs open to attention, but doing things like that, making default browser behavior necessary to gameplay, was something really hard for me to navigate. As far as the player's experience goes, I had to give up a lot of control while at the same time imposing a lot of restrictions on the player. If you have your browser set to open tabs in a new window, for example, instead of just a new tab, the gameplay would be totally different. I teed up a new ULD bit broken. A lot of front-end devs feel strongly about this type of thing, talk about taking a preference away from the user, popping a blank in the code to a far side page to open in a new tab. I had to decide that my game was not going to rely on best practice in code, ensuring cross-platform compatibility for such a thing would have been impossible. I discovered that 
If I wanted to be really inventive with the gameplay, I could not be afraid of breaking all the best practice rules. The hyperlinks used in the game are very fragile. They may break if and when browser settings change. The fragility of works in a browser was pointed out to me in one of the first pages of Black Root. There is a link to Google search results for Paradise. A few months ago, the image results changed from more this idyllic landscapes and beautiful sunsets to pictures of paradise, California burning. I never could have predicted a year ago when I made that page that this small part of my game would change so drastically. That's why I love making work on the internet. Though the internet is alive.